Good afternoon, Australia. Good evening, America, and welcome to everyone across the planet. This is indeed one of our final shows for 2021, and I'm really delighted that I get to share it with the amazing Mel B. This is the final in our show series for 2021 from Unwavered Success with Mel B. Now, before we get on to the to the show. Just a reminder, if you're listening live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, I'm going to get it right one of these days. Payo is listening live online to take your questions and comments and to forward you links about anything that we talk about on the show today. In addition to that, you can always jump onto melb.com and that's Mel with a double L and don't confuse it with the other Mel B for God's sakes or tinylontis.com where you'll find under the tab co-hosts and guests all the information about Mel and what we talk about today. And today is a fabulous show, so let's get on with it. My delightful co-host is Mel Belmont and she is a mindset mentor, intuitive healer and speaker on perspective shifts and empathic elevation. Mel B is considered a change maker for the superconscious transformation of people across the world. She's recognized as the top 1% of leadership coaches and is an award, sorry, is a multi award winning quantum healer. And if you're wanting to make a bigger impact on the world, then our show, Unwavered success with Mel B is absolutely perfect for you. Now, quick recap of where we've been in this series of shows. In episode one, we talked about the ego, the super conscious alignment with our spiritual team, why values matter, and creation of our belief systems, or BS. Pretty cool, hey? In the second episode, uh, we also touched on the differences between perspective, paradigm, and quantum shifts. In episode two, we talked about the power of quantum healing, and you'll be hearing more about quantum healing now and particularly into the next decade. We talked about facilitating the subconscious and the superconscious, and how Mel can do deep belief hacks on your mind web now remember that visual picture we had of a mind web think of spider web and think about it in your brain multiple spider webs in your brain and how mel helps you clear away all that mind web and frees us from the fears of being judged our blocks around money and our self-conscious beliefs and we explained how these thoughts, thought patterns and mind webs are often created in our early years before we have the conscious ability to recognize them. Then in episode three, we talked about the universal laws, one of my favorite topics, and how the law of manifestation doesn't work without all of them. We talked about the six pillars of Mal's Alchemy Accelerator program, which includes clarity, confidence and commitment, how influence, income and independence plays out and what happens if you don't balance all these things and align them with the universal laws. And today we're going to talk about how to integrate regular quantum shifts and make continuous positive impact. And one of the subjects we're going to talk about today is color frequencies and how to attract with more success the problem with motivation versus inspiration, the four stages of empathpreneurship. And we have some links that we'll talk about later in the show. And I've got the most beautiful slides to share with you today. Welcome back to the show, Mel. I'm so glad I get to share this show with you. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. So good. Wow. We've covered a lot when you when I hear you summarizing all that. Oh. Absolutely. We've delved in deeply to some wonderful subjects and topics and how you help people to get the most out of life and create that 
impact that mm. they're after. And today we get to talk about colours, which is one of my favourite subjects. And I've worked with a number of artists and their concepts around colours and perspective of colours is fascinating. So I'm actually really keen to hear your wisdom and thoughts on colour smell and why they affect our confidence and our success and to understand that colour has a vibrational frequency of its own. So Mel, let's get started on this conversation about colours. Um, I just want to do a throwback because I actually know one of the artists, Tracy, she's a personal friend of mine and I had no idea she'd yes. done the show with you. So it's like, shout out to Tracy <laughs> Eden, who is a phenomenal artist and really Isn't what her she? life I've yeah, we've had amazing conversations about color. And anyway, so color, um, it has its own frequency. And I kind of, it was a bit too woo-woo for me when I first got into it. And I didn't realize how, yeah. I guess, powerful it can be when you tune into what that vibration of color is. And of course, there's the whole spectrum, the tones around them at the same time. Um, and so a little bit of context around color is light, reflects off objects at different frequencies <clears throat> and how much light it absorbs kind of tells our brain what color it is and then depending on the state we're in we actually tune into different colors at different times and it can be a good indicator of where we're at what we need or what we're sending out there so color has proven to be quite useful and especially in my healing uh, processes with clients yeah. so yeah, let's let's talk about. Should we dive into them um, around? Yes, what please, I'm going to flick up are. the first. I'm going to flick up the first um, of yep. our slides. Oh. It's beautiful, slidey slides. All right, so um, I'm just looking at the slides. So sorry, I'm looking away at the camera. So what you have is the wheel of colors. Um, I started with a rainbow, Ooh. but I actually like the fact that it's an entire wheel plus all the spectrum. And they each have a representation by the little logos there. But what we're looking for is yes. equilibrium in the middle. And many people, um, and it's often commonly referred to as white light or golden light, because that's the full rainbow kind of integration. So if you drop down uh, into the first slide is the frequency of red. And red is the first color in the rainbow, which means Hi. so... Yeah, yes, you're right, you're right. Um, which often has associations and creates energies of desire, of passion. It can be aggressive. It can also be very helpful for action and power. I see you're wearing red and white today. Could be your Christmas vibe or it could be you tuning in to the action and the leadership qualities of red. I'm looking over at you now. We didn't tune into it. I did wear Christmas green. <laughs> I had a green um, outfit out and then I remembered if I wear green against my green screen, it's not good on the camera. Ooh. And then I'm like, oh, Christmas, got to go with Christmas. And Isn't that yes, funny? You so tuned into and green and, and then you couldn't technically yes. wear it. Wow. <laughs> yes. There you go. This is why I love yes. my office. I can wear whatever I want. So it's yes. um, hard not to catch red in nature in life red is one of the most dominant colors it's the brightest um and it's the most kind of dramatic color it can create excitement yes. and drama um it's a really warm color and can create emotional responses in people which is why and in animals which is why for example red flags to bulls it's actually a really strong Ooh. powerful color um a bit of history is it was a really expensive color to produce. So it is associated with royalty and wealth. Um, those with a higher status could afford the dyes and the materials to create red garments. Um, today, it's mainly associated with um, uh, danger. All our danger warning signs and traffic signs are red. Red means stop. So it's got quite a negative context in some regards, but it can be used really powerfully for action and for um, support from the universe is another one. It's really connected to earth, which is why it's symbolized with a tree. So yeah, energy, action, um, human. And it's a beautiful statement of 
as a human, I have enough. I know I enough. I am enough. So that's my beautiful. Uh, I love those incantations that you've got with our show today, particularly the one around red. I am human. I have enough. I know enough. I am enough, which in itself envisages power and strength in a good way, doesn't it, Mel? Yeah, it's self-power, self-esteem, self-worth, self-confidence, mm. all of the selves. So uh, that's yeah. the red. And, it, yeah. you know, we're drawn to different colors and different days and even different times of the day. Um, you know, a red lipstick can certainly make yeah. you feel a lot more powerful. So mm. my favorite color on the spectrum is orange. Um, in so many ways, I've had um, clothing stylists say orange is really powerful. I wear the bright neon end of the scale, really, really um, hyper orange rather than more of a pastel muted orange. Um, it's the color of joy and creativity. Um, and our brains actually get a, an emotional response when we see the color orange. It, it's warm. It's happy. It's joyful. Um, it reinforces gut instincts and offers emotional strength in difficult times. And it's really good to kind of support general wellness uh, when you're feeling down or whether you're feeling energetically depleted. It's really good to tune into anything orange. I mean, you think of an orange, it's juicy, it's citrusy. So orange is a great color. It's stimulating, it's vibrant, and it's flamboyant almost as well. Not many people, and like red, not many people wear uh, orange colors, but it's quite attention seeking when it is. Often people will comment when I wear it. Um, it, it looks beautiful yeah. on you, by the way, Mel. And I wondered if that's linked. Uh, so your branding often features the color of mm. orange or, or orange gold. Um, yeah. And is that why it's attractive for you? Because it has that beautiful flamboyancy attached to it? I think so. Initially, I just loved the color. I was always, you know, yeah. a favorite color. Then I'll show yeah. you a copy of my, uh, which we don't really talk about because it's not applicable as such to this audience. But I inadvertently, without any knowing of the color spectrum, I published my book and it so happened I was wearing an orange oh, dress and my cover yeah. ended up being orange. And then I started to learn more of this. I'm like, oh my Lord, orange is me through, 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 through. And then when I had my colors yeah. done styling, they're like, you should wear orange. It's a very good color for you. So it was kind of just tuning in to what makes me yes. happy and light what me up. Works. And it turns out to yeah. be, yes, it's a flamboyant color. Oh. I'm pretty out there with my personality. But it's also useful yeah. for um, creating new ideas. It's like an inspirational color. Um, what else? It can support us from recovery disappointments or even yes. things like wounded hearts so orange is a beautiful multifaceted powerful color um so it's not aggressive is that, like, and is that why if you're feeling a little um in need of a perk up it's often the orange that draws you uh i have a couple of orange shirts and there are days when i'm just drawn to wall to wear them that's the color frequency reaching out and saying today you need a little bit of a perk up let's wear that orange shirt yeah yeah and it, it's less assertive less passionate than the red but still got a lot of energy charge behind it so it's really good um for compassion for self sometimes you put it on to cheer okay. yourself up but it, it's actually a very nurturing color as well so uh that's mm -hmm. the orange and i'll let you read the incantations out if you wish oh it's lovely <laughs> i love this it's called it goes i embrace my future with compassion and enthusiasm i am creative strong and capable so it's just a, it's a different energy and feeling than red a little softer but still quite powerful though mel yeah but yeah, absolutely. Which leads us to yellow, which is a you know transit transition again. It's a very sunny, like literally is the color of the sun. So it's a very joyous, happy, positive, optimistic color, and it's kind of like food for the soul, the body, the mind. Everything responds so delightfully. Like it's a delightful it's color. It's yellow. Um, it's confident. It's energetic. Um, the spiritual meaning brings focus, energy, and you know, just general feelings of happiness and joy. Um, 
it's in the past it stood for wisdom and intellect and that's like right through the ages yellow oh. is used for intellect and wisdom um <clears throat> it aids things like logic and i'm closing my eyes as i remember what it's aided for logic and memory yes. concentration yes. Um, and really good for communication um mental agility all of that mind stuff although it is actually the fire um uh earth uh element it's uh really yes. good for helping go through change so think of fire as a transition from wood smoke flame ash like it's a full transition so it's represented by the fire um really good for changing jobs transitioning through any life stage um mm -hmm. taking on new knowledge anything like that good also really really good for the moment for isolation because it does create those ah. joyful vibes um if you're feeling low or lacking some self-esteem for any reason yellows are very joyful mm -hmm. so i'll let you do the uh the statement for yellow this one is i have powerful mental agility and perception i am powerful focused on my useful knowledge so that's a recognition of self isn't it and success yes. within self and a recognition that we were all wise in our own way so mm. that's a lovely connotation to associate with yellow isn't it yeah it's very as you say it's it's very good for internal awareness um so yeah. moving on to green just so happens i didn't really think yeah. about it today green. it represents prosperity most people um know that green is the color that the banks use for money in he over here they're called greenbacks the hundred dollar bill is green um it's also very associated with spirituality um a lot of people think it's about plants and trees but it's actually the air element um and ah. it's about growth and manifestation and um, new beginnings. And if you think about plants, they're usually quite a luminous green when they're first budding, when something is newly growing, yeah. a very vibrant mm -hmm. green. Um, it's useful if you're feeling resistance to spiritual connection, it's quite good for kind of creating openness. Um, it's about surrender That's and trusting. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mel, is that why often um, coaches and mentors such as just yourself suggest grounding practices, which mm -hmm. involves usually green grass, walking on green grass is just a very simple grounding process. Is that why it works? Um, well, grounding is slightly different philosophy, but it definitely works with yes, having yes. green grass because it's about growth and connection to earth, but it's actually the easiest way to connect back to earth is through grass because it's literally yes. growing from the earth. Um, so the yeah. grounding is absolutely very powerful to stand in grass. A lot of people are drawn to sand though. So a lot of people are very um, water kind of drawn. So it's not just, uh, grounding can't just be yeah. done through grass. It can be done anyway, right. connecting with nature. Um, mm -hmm. It's a really yeah. magnetic vibration um really good for manifesting because it's about growth um really good if you've got your vision board to put anything financial that you want to expand put that mm. in or surrounded with green or a back green board uh back uh, like green piece of paper with your image of what you're trying to create in the green section which i don't know my north south but feng shui or heart but um use green to create to manifest um, it's also commonly or not so commonly used for love. Most people associate ah. for love, but green actually is a really strong vibration of receiving love from the universe. Um, what else? It provides safety and security. So green for go, it's safe to proceed. Um, uh -huh. and yeah, definitely about the money and all that sort of thing. It's really good to aid your heart to slow down provide calmness and tranquility for our nervous system and metabolism so if people are uh doing these things called diets in the new year or changing their eating habits bringing in green not just in what they're consuming but green frequencies around them can support that 
So I'll let you go ahead with, are you still with me or have you frozen on me? I feel you've frozen me. So I will continue. Um, I give, receive and accept love effortlessly. I surrender and trust the universe and I deserve unconditional wealth in all of its manifested forms. So green is a very powerful, you know, the wind of bringing in the new, oh, we've lost her. So I'm just going to keep going unless uh, I get a, a message from somebody else saying I shouldn't. Um, if you want to tell me anything in the chat, that's fine uh, to the tech team. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to blue and assume we're still streaming. Blue is a really safe color. Um, the most universally liked color. It is uh, a spiritual meaning of trust, reliability, responsibility. And if you think about it in the corporate world, it really is a company most of the big companies use. So think Facebook, Microsoft, all of those big corporations know that blue is a color and frequency of trust. It's also the helper or the rescuer um, to people in need. So if you want to support someone, you can send pictures of blue. You think of blue sky, it's really open and safe and it's, it's there to provide comfort. Um, what else about blue? It's useful for persistence and determination. So if you are trying to do something, you know, this, this is a hard slog. Blue is a beautiful color to bring in and wear for those days when you just feel on groundhog and when am I going to get through this? It's calming if you think of the ocean and it's really grounded. If you think of the sky, then the two actually come together. So it's actually very good for grounding. Um, it's symbolized by um, the ether, which is communication. So it's good for taking time when, uh, to, to using when you want to connect with uh, other people through expression of communication, both through your body and your words. Uh, it's pretty fat, powerful um, from external sources. So it's often used for other healers and spiritual work. And so what we say when we are speaking can carry a lot of power when we are particularly immersed in the vibration of blue. So while we wait for Tony's internet connection to rejoin us, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, one of the statements you can say, um, either holding a blue crystal or just thinking about blue is I can easily speak and trust my inner truth and power and calm, confident and grounded. Beautiful blue, there's so many tones you can use. It doesn't matter what frequency, what shade you use. It's about the connection to the frequency and energy of the blue tone. And of course, moving around the wheel or, or over the rainbow, which way you wanna uh, talk about it, indigo or teal. Teal, uh, most people kind of understand. Indigo confuses some people like, is that blue, is that purple? So teal, uh, the way I like to help people remember is Tiffany teal um, is, you know, the, about the perfect shade of indigo. And it um, symbolizes gentleness and practical thinking. It's really good for kind of creating that connection to ourself and higher consciousness. Um, it is about the third eye in our sight and it aids logic. Um, to make informed and responsible decisions, predictability and reliable action and thinking taken, taking. Um, it will get you back on the straight and narrow. And it's really used commonly in the spiritual world for receiving messages from the other side. Um, anything that's about uh, the clear senses, so telepathy, clairvoyance, or your knowingness, your intuitive knowing, uh, and all the mediumships is often used with either indigo or violet. Um, and is, as I say, mentioned, um, associated with the third eye. Ah, it's quite weird talking to myself, but I'm going to keep going. Um, the other thing about teal is it stands for elegance and sophistication. Again, can't help but think that Tiffany chose this color very, very carefully. Um, it's very connected to the spirit consciousness. Um, and it's great for spiritual wisdom and decision-making in that space. 
So really good if you are having an identity crisis like the transitions before um, when you're using green, using teal can really help you get clarity about where you're going with your life, what you're going to do next and help you be sure of yourself and what you want to do going forward. Very good for your intuitive knowing. So the statements you can make with teal is I am connected to my inner truth. I share my gifts at my highest frequency and my soul purpose inspires and guides me. So it's a very uh, gentle and uh, communication channel. Gonna keep going until Tony comes back to us. Uh, Violet, Hello. are you with us? Hello. Hi. Gosh, my wonderful audience, Mel, I am so sorry. Uh, the internet what? apparently decided just to drop out. Um, okay. I'm hoping we're up to blue indigo. Oh, we're now up to indigo and violet. So awesome. Okay, so violet is the shortest uh, frequency that we can see with our eyes. It's like the shortest uh, on the spectrum, meaning it has the highest frequency it's the last vibration kind of on the light spectrum so the color this deep purple color violet symbolizes wisdom and sensitivity about intuition perception and the higher mind um, it's used in a lot of religions um, so the highest orders use purple robes uh, it encourages spiritual fulfillment and if you're seeking the meaning of life then you can turn to violet for answers and guidance it's really good at uh, aiding concentration and introspection and, of course, meditation. So you can achieve deeper consciousness and, you know, intuitive knowing. If you're in a business it's of beautiful. service. Yeah. I just keep going. It, it's a beautiful spiritual tone, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's also used for justice um, and in the court system as well. It's kind of like the defender of, of the humanity and people's rights. Um, yes. And it's really good for healing and also for teaching as well. So passing information on. So use violet or purple for emotional and physical harmony. Um, if you're feeling any lack of connectedness or loneliness or depression or any low frequencies, it's really good for finding deeper purpose to life. So I'll let you catch up and uh, maybe share the uh, statements for purple or violet. Absolutely. It's, um, it's a beautiful color. And it also, um, when I think of auras, I always, the purple indigo color is the one that always comes first and foremost into my, 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 my mind. Yeah. And the affirmation around that is I have motivational and physical harmony. I am joyful, complete and at peace. I honour and celebrate all of my gifts and abilities. How beautiful is that? I mean, they're all good. All colours. I know, are but that one's lovely. Yeah. So we're all drawn to them at different times um, for different reasons. Sometimes it's because you're really in that frequency. Other times it's maybe because mm -hmm. you need to draw on the frequency. So you can use it to see how you're feeling each day. Okay, and so the colours that we're drawn to, those are the ones that are going to help us get better from our day or support us more during the day. That's how you use colours and that's how you use their frequency to help you during the day. Is that what you do, Mel? Um, look, I am just kind of what do I feel like wearing? So I actually ask myself yes. what colour, what do I feel? I've got quite a spectrum, not just orange. Yeah. Um, and it's like, what do I feel like wearing? And it could be because I am resonance with that color. So I'm feeling beautifully and grounded. And I feel like that purple frequency um, versus drawing on it. I actually draw on the energy in my healing work. So for example, I just had a client beforehand and I asked her what the color of grace was for her. And she said, it's like oh. a peaky color. So it doesn't matter what the color is. That's the frequency she needed to integrate mm -hmm. into her body, mind, and spirit. So 
it could be a different color the next time, but it's like, that's what I'm drawn to today. And that's how we kind of like yeah. use it. Fantastic. So colors are really important and they support our motivation. And you've got a bit of a different perspective around motivation versus inspiration. So mm. I quickly wanted to talk about that um, and the fact that motivation comes from outside inspiration comes from inside why the difference um look <clears throat> i've got no issue with either it's about knowing mm -hmm. the difference so we have inspirational yes. keynote speakers we have motivational people mm -hmm. have different gifts that they bring so i'm not saying one is better than the other but being aware no, no. of what do i need uh, and some people kind of think they're all together so motivation is external and I think I created a diagram for that I'm not trying not to look yes. away from the camera too much um and so that's when it, it it's like motivation is outside excitement that is provided to us or we're drawing it from yes. external from self um whether it's to take action or uh, like it's for incentivizing yourself or um for uh, doing um, yeah, very much doing. It's if you need a push, like a motivation, your doctor might motivate you, your personal trainer might motivate you, your coach might. So it's external justification mm -hmm. for action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whereas, mm -hmm. whereas inspiration mm -hmm. comes from internal, it's internally inspired. So inspired action, we might hear this said a lot, uh, particularly from people in the kind of spiritual space of, I got a download or I got ins yes. this inspiration. It's coming from within. So inspiration internal, that's the easy way of remembering it. Ideas yeah. and your downloads and your genius and your gifts and your talents and well, sparks of ideas and illumination. They're all about inspiration, which is why I use the light bulb here. Um, but it's about being, they come through when we are human beings versus the human doings. And we oh, kind of need both of them to create our success. And it's important to balance the both as well, Mel, is it? Yeah, um, and that's a good question. It's, um, oh, I guess it's shifting because sometimes you might need more inspiration depending on what you're working on. So yes. I use a lot of inspiration, but then I have to do a lot of the doing to bring that inspiration into other people's reality. So it's all very well me mm -hmm. having an idea or inspiration, but I've got to share it with the world, which requires me to be a human doing. So okay. I okay. think you're right. You do need the balance, but I think this word balance is a bit of a false because mm -hmm. Nothing in life should ever always be equal, like level. It's, it's always up and down, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think we allow enough time for inspiration of silence, enough meditation, enough moments to. Yeah. Um, I know a lot ponder. of. People, pardon? Sit and ponder. Yeah. So think, just sit and think. That yeah. will spark inspiration. So the sitting and the thinking uh, sparks the inter, uh, the inspiration, but then you might need motivation to bring the inspiration to life. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what I was going to say was um, many people don't like silence and whether they know it or not, it's often because the monkey mind eh, or the gremlin mind or the negative talk, self-talk, whatever you want to call it, is actually louder or you can, you're more aware of that talk going on. So they use music to kind of drown that out and listen to the lyrics of words instead of the lyrics of their own mind. And that can be good, bad or indifferent. What are the words mm -hmm. saying? What are the emotions being invoked? Are they serving? Great, if they are. So often I've listened to word uh, to songs and gone, wow, those words are really negative, but they're to a happy tune. 
And so we don't always realize like, whoa, that's the message they're saying, especially for children. Um, so what we're listening to can help motivate or it can actually demotivate us without even realizing because we're singing along or listening to the words and it's actually affecting our subconscious thinking. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Mel, I'm just curious, well, we touched on silence then and mm. I recognize that for me, complete silence is a real challenge. From your perspective, from being um, such a high level coach and mentor for all of these years, is that a common struggle for people to just be silent and yeah. allow inspiration to come? And why do you think we struggle as humans to do that? Although if I speak to my husband and ask him what's going on in his mind, he'll go, oh, nothing. And I'm like, wow, only to be, to be able to live like that with nothing in my brain. That yeah. would be phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get my little characters here. Oh, good. So this isn't planned. We've got ego in our mind. Oh, right. Yeah. So um they're the same this is a, a byproduct of mogwai so some of the millennials won't know gremlins but oh but i you, love gremlins everyone loves it when i give this this demonstration so little mogwai he's a quiet mm -hmm. little voice and he's trying to tell us you're amazing and you should do this and not do that and not worry about these people and just do what makes you happy and then you've got the loud noisy troublemaker who's just being its natural self which is mischief yeah. which is exploring yeah. which is a little bit defensive a little bit of troublemaking he's loud he drowns out the voice of the little higher self or the other version of yeah. self mm -hmm. so i help people recognize that if we're trying to drown out noise it's often him mm -hmm. and the right. silence is uncomfortable because He's got so much to say, whereas this little one's like, I'll only respond Why? when you really want to listen to me. And it, like, they're both going at the same time. This yeah, is the one we yeah, hear. Yeah. So silence is yeah. very uncomfortable for many. Yeah. Because they haven't learned how to literally tell him or her to stop. We can talk to ourselves, stop. Yeah, yeah talking like that that is not true i am capable of that i can do that i don't care if it doesn't work out and i fail i'm still going to do it and That's learn okay. from it and therefore there is not a failing it's just your fear of judgment mm -hmm. perception whatever you think failing means yeah so mel you work with empaths and I'm curious now if empaths struggle more with the concept of silence or quieting their mind mm. versus people who aren't empaths what's your experience because in the next segment we're going to take uh, we're going to talk about empathpreneurship so I'm curious before we start that conversation if it's your experience because you work with empaths so much is it a stronger struggle for us to quiet our minds than other people? Do you no, think? No, I, I don't think it's harder. Uh, I don't think it's, it, it's a human trait. I don't think it's a personality style or gift trait. Okay. Um, it's a mm -hmm. skill to recognize that this little monkey going yes. on in the back of her head. And it's a skill to catch it and, and stop it. Right, stop. I don't believe that. That's a thought. That's not the truth or reality. Mm -hmm. um, how many of us have thought about a, a, a confrontation or a, mm -hmm. a dial, dialogue that's yet to take place? And we create mm -hmm. all these scenarios in our mind, or this version of, of ourselves. What's going to happen? Yeah. How it's going to go, what's going to be said. And when you really think about it, does it ever go in any of those ways? Exactly. It doesn't matter how long you ruminate and all the scenarios, it never goes. There's always another one that comes up and you're like, oh, I didn't plan for that. 
So it's not just empaths who's, who struggle with this stuff. The thing yeah. about empaths is we care so deeply about whatever our empathic traits are. So whether it's the animals, nature, other humans, we care so deeply that those judgments, those thoughts, those perceptions that we think they might be having, this version thinks or worries might be yeah. interpreted. So empaths really struggle, really struggle with judgments and wanting to yes. be kind of compassionately received and not to be, yeah. it's not about fear of rejection, but that is underpinning a lot of it. Um, but, you know, we all struggle with an all example, of all of us. Have one mind. An example of that just right here, right now, that's happened within the, the confines of this show, even when my internet dropped out, my immediate thought was, oh my God, that's going to spoil Mel's show. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the first. And I am now conscious of that and go, no, it's okay. Just breathe. Wait one moment. Reset. Jump back on. Get on with the show. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, before I was conscious of that conversation in my brain and after having worked with Mel uh, for the last four weeks, I'm now trying to be really conscious of those things and cut them off at the past so to speak and go no it's okay you cannot control the internet it's all right mel will keep yeah. going it's a wonderful show do you know what i mean but yeah. before that would have that would would have spoilt the whole show for me and just being conscious enough to catch that and being even more conscious having worked with mel for the last um four shows i'm very much going no, that's not okay. <laughs> It'll be all it, right. It, Let's get on with it. It's the, the judgment of self can actually be very destructive. Yeah. And absolutely creating dramas, creating scenarios that are just a set of perspectives that mm -hmm. they could become reality if you want them to be and you can keep pushing that path. But if you saw, yeah. if you saw when you came back online, I just demonstrated to you i've got this take a second yes. i'm just going to keep going yes. with it and yes. let you regroup and it's like it's there's nothing to panic about um yeah, absolutely yeah no, look it, it's something we all struggle with is catching our negative self-talk and it's just the fear of judgment mm -hmm. fear of rejection it's all fears everything's fear-based in that sense so it's okay definitely we have, um, to, we're going to talk about empathpreneurship and the stages mm -hmm. of empathpreneurship and yep. it comes in four layers. And while you start on that, I'm going to get up our next slide, which is um, okay. a beautiful sunbeam. Yes. So oh. when I was working with um, empaths a few years ago, I, I was helping them understand where on the spectrum their gifts are and how that might be affecting how they show up in the world, um, those who have more accepted their talents and are willing to show up and say, I'm an empath without fear of judgment and going, well, that's a bit weird or you're a bit whatever's. Yeah. We were able to embody our self, our uniqueness, our gifts and talents. They're all amplified more the more we accept ourselves. So absolutely go ahead and share the slide for um, stage one. Of empath there we go. Stage one. Stage one. It's not showing, my darling. Could be because you dropped out oh, early. So I'll let you keep no. working on that. I'll push on. <laughs> so what I've got is um, four stages. I think that's showing now. It's starting to. Um, is independence, influence, income, and then how that impact is um, made from those in independence, income, and influence. So the first stage, which is the black one, my darling, is um, the first indicator of independence uh, pillar or, uh, or scale is you're often un uncertain about your own independence. You doubt your own um, views of the world. Um, from an influence, probably don't have much of a strong reputation out there in the socials world. Um, you're probably financially struggling making an income from your empathic traits or fully 
showing up so that you can be charged what you're worth. Um, but there's usually a determination and a calling um, about making an impact, making a difference, whether that's as an employee in a team or on your own, um, you know, soul trader version of the world. So the second layer is um, independence. You're kind of relying on someone else to almost give you permission to show up. Um, you're, you're getting known in the world, but you're really only relying on referrals, which is not a bad thing. A referral based yes. business is super powerful, but it can have limits of its reach of the uh, influence. Um, yeah. Income, you can do most things. Uh, you've got the money coming mm -hmm. in and you're pretty comfortable where you are. And you are maybe an industry leader or change maker, or a thought leader or something along those lines of making an impact in the world with whatever your gifts and talents are. The third next stage. stage. Yeah. Any questions before I move on? No, that's, I, I love that setup. It makes it very clear and easy to understand the different stages. And the third stage sounds like we're getting further along the track, yeah? Yeah, so you're becoming more of an empathpreneur. Um, you're more intuitively guided. Um, your reputation is starting to be known before people have heard of you, before they've come across you. Uh, yes. You're well-paid and you're completely comfortable charging what you are worth. And recognizing others suffering does not mean that you have to financially suffer as well. Uh, and you're mm -hmm. a change maker. Like people are uh, taking your views and opinions and you're actually shifting dynamics and making that impact with them directly. So transformational. Okay. And then, of course, if you're a full empathpreneur, you reach the, the kind of fourth stage, the outer, which is you don't doubt everything is inevitable. Like you have no yes. doubts about where you're going, what you're going to do. You might have questions when and how, but you're not doubting it. Um, you ha will have a wait list for your clients, for your work, for your services, for your consults, whatever it is that you do in the work world, often of a service-based nature. Yeah. Um, and then, you, of course, you have complete peace of mind. You don't worry. Money's coming in and it's making the financial choices that you have just open complete financial freedom. Yes. And then the mm -hmm. last one is you have a world renowned impact. You're making more of a global impact on the world. Wow! And so I can remember if I shared the last slide with you, which is uh, your full empathpreneur, you've got inevitability, oh, look at of that. Independence, your change maker as an influencer, mm -hmm. you're philanthropic with your financials and you are heralded yes healer, impactor, dynamo, whatever, you are well known. So that's the goal of empathpreneurship and where, where people with our gifts could be aiming to. Now, not everyone wants to be out on those outer global yes. aspirations. Sometimes you can people. help them get there, Mel, can't you? That, that's, your, that's your life path and your sole purpose is mm -hmm. to help empathpreneurs get to those levels whichever one that they aspire to yeah right. and it's completely okay to change so mm -hmm. where you are in your family life whatever you're doing uh, maybe you're doing some knowledge um, expansion whatever it is you're working on you can go up and down the scales it's just stages of empathpreneurship there's different yeah. goals at different times um, so yeah okay. Okay, so in episode three, we talked about the alchemy accelerator mm -hmm. and we talked about um, the way in which the alchemy accelerator helps people. Um, you started to see some similar traits come up in those categories for those stages. What were they? So that was the income influence independence to make the impact so it's the eyes the letter i not the okay. third eye um so yeah and those were the traits that people were looking to expand mm -hmm. they wanted more income to do more whatever yep. personal choice was they wanted mm -hmm. to have more clients which actually comes mm -hmm. down to the influence you have in social media and your marketing and your messaging and 
however you come over in the world. Um, and all that comes down to how independently do you trust your knowing? How unwavered are you with your own independent ah. knowledge? And okay. then of course you're driven to make the impact from there. So that's the alchemy yeah. accelerator from those three, but you need clarity, confidence, and commitment in order to integrate it all on that wheel. Absolutely. And then the next step up from the alchemy accelerator is? Well, there's not really one from that. It's fully embodying that. So it's a stage four of your empathpreneurship of being fully embodied of what you want to be. So you are the unwavered you have unwavering confidence. So I guess the ultimate is to be unwavered, which is why I've named the show. Yes. But it's not another layer. It's, it's like all embodied. It's like when you're unwavered, nothing gets through. Everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the other, before we run out of time, the other pathway that I wanted to talk about, pathway is not the right word, is the ambition accelerator. Mm. Can you tell the audience about that program and what it looks like? Okay, so a couple of years ago now, <laughs> um, I um, kind of took these clarity, confidence, commitment. They are the things that the traits people want. That These are the wants. This is what people want from working with me. They want more confidence. Yeah. They want more clarity around whatever clarity. they're working, struggling with. So I recorded um, some guided meditations to amplify those three aspects, clarity, confidence, commitment. Mm -hmm. um, because when you've got all of that nailed, that's, that's success. And it doesn't matter what your financial income, it doesn't matter your uh, impact that you're making or the influence you have because you're grounded within self. And then what you do from there, you can amplify through the accelerator, those aspects of influence, income and independence. So- um, no, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you go on. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're I'm, uh, <laughs> I've got a, a question. The importance and the impact of meditation on making differences in your life. That's why you've done that via the Ambition Accelerator is through meditation. Why is it so important, particularly for empathpreneurs? Well, if you remember back in, I think it was show one, we were talking about yeah. the brain frequencies. Yeah. And so like so many of the millionaires, the elite, the celebrities use meditation. So it's not yes. woo -woo, it's science. It's and the not. reason being is <clears throat> you're accessing different parts of the brain, different frequencies of self. Mm in that state of meditation. So meditation yeah. takes you down the frequency which amplifies your vibration. So as we drop out of the consciousness scale, well, or go up the consciousness scale, Into depends on how you want to look at it. But we, we drop all the low frequencies and move into that of joy and happiness, which is what meditation can help us uh, accomplish we're dropping into theta state. And from there, we actually have access to more parts of our brain. We can be more creative and more spiritual. We can find answers. We can be more imaginative. And if your brain can think something, it already knows it has the resources to make it happen. If you think it, you can achieve it. And then sometimes we- state. Yes. So as you drop into those lower, I'm going to call them lower. As you drop into those lower levels of states, your frequency rises. So mm -hmm. it's like a converse reaction, which is really helpful in moving you forward and and getting you to where you want to go. Is mm. that my correct understanding? Yeah, you absolutely. Want to drop, you want to drop your brain into a space where it's operating at its highest vibration and frequency and fill it with meditative goodness. How's that mm. for an explanation? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you created those accelerators. They're specifically designed to get you further faster. Yeah, so 
they start with my cognitive reframe process, which drops you mm -hmm. into the state. So that's my own yeah. um, intellectual property, if you like. That's the process yes. I came up with to help people access theta state in any, which is basically, in simple language, a guided meditation, which takes you deep into yeah. your subconscious. From there, you can access other parts of your brain. Spiritual awareness opens up. It's almost like you can't describe it. You can't explain it. It yeah. happens. And it's there yeah. are tangible and outcomes. It works. You start with one set of feelings and they're completely dissipated by the end of the session. So what I recorded with Ambition Accelerator was a guide to releasing each of those three components of clarity. How do I get clarity? How do I take away confusion? I've got these emotions of overwhelm and confusion. How do I let go of that? to access clarity, confidence. How do I stop feeling so much self-doubt and embody confidence? And then how do I stay motivated from the inspiration and be committed to doing whatever it is I've been inspired to do? So it's all like, it all kind of comes together in this big, beautiful yes. ecosystem. And I shared some of the stuff. And Mel, how can the audience get access to Ambition Accelerator? So it's really simple. AmbitionAccelerator.online forward slash AA for Ambition Accelerator. Very simple. Yes. And it's only 20 minutes a day, isn't it? So you have to register and then your work is 20 minutes a day, isn't it? You have to listen 20 minutes a day. Yeah, look, it's access to videos. So you see me live and I'm talking you mm -hmm. through this. I actually recorded them at one of my, at the start of my retreats one day before yeah. all my clients yeah. arrived. So I recorded them in this beautiful retreat space. Um, mm -hmm. And it's about 20 minutes for each one. Each one starts with the CRP, getting you into theta, the same one each day. Yes. And then it's got yes. a different ending to it, depending. So you can actually chop and change still working on confidence you can repeat it three four five times however you could do some oh, say wow. 21 days to change a habit but i don't subscribe mm. to that so you yes, can listen to it whatever whatever you feel you need yeah yeah fantastic mel i've just looked at the clock and gone oh my god we are out of time and i feel like we haven't <laughs> i haven't had enough time today but the Ambition Accelerator, I want to encourage people over the Christmas break when we've got some downtime and some spare time and some time to do some work on ourselves, jump on and grab the Ambition Accelerator. So it's ambitionaccelerator.online forward slash AA. If you're listening to this video on Rewind, it will be in the notes attached to the show wherever you're listening to the show. Mel B., Thank you so much for your loving kindness and patience today in face of technology glitches. Thank you for sharing your beautiful heartfelt wisdom with the audience yet again. I can't wait for our next series of four shows in January 2022. Thank you for sharing the last show of 2021 with me. And I can't wait for 2022. Mel B, thank you so much. You're welcome. See you next year, everyone. Have a great Christmas. Bye. And that, my amazing audience, is your last show on Unwavered Success with Mel B. We would be back in January with another show series. I encourage you to jump on to Mel B, that's with a double L, dot com, and check out the amazing resources she has there and connect with Mel. Change your life in a very short period of time with Mel B, particularly if you're an empath connect with Mel, have a chat. And that, my friends, is your lot for this year. I want you to have a fantastic Christmas. Be safe, be careful, and we'll see you back in 2022. Bye, gorgeous Mel.